Ladies and gentlemen, welcome in to the next episode of Joe Kelly's Psychedelic Experience. Hey, what's going on with you? It's your old pal Joe checking in with you on a motherfucking Monday, my friend. This podcast is brought to you by Top Shelf Grind Coffee. Do yourself a favor. Go over to Amazon.com and get yourself some Top Shelf Grind Coffee. Use the promo code 10JoeKelly at checkout. You'll get 10% off of your entire order. Great stuff over there, all organic, all good for you. My personal favorite is the Lion's Mane Dark Roast. Lion's Mane Mushroom, used to help uh, your brain focus better, you know, think clearer. They also have, uh, hey, let's be honest, you're fat right now, okay? I'm not, I didn't mean to be the one to tell you, you know, but let's be honest. Winter just passed, you've put on some pounds, it's been COVID, the holidays, you're not looking your best, all right? Top Shelf Grind also has a weight loss roast coffee. So you could drink that, shed some poundage because the sun's coming out, weather's getting nice, you gotta be looking good. Also, hey, if you have your own coffee grinder, they do have a couple whole bean roasts as well. One is loaded with caffeine. Maybe you're drinking your coffee, you're going, this ain't enough for me. Guess what? Top Shelf Grind has you taken care of. Order their extra caffeine dark roast. Again, Amazon.com, Top Shelf Grind Coffee. There is a link in the description of the podcast. Use the promo code 10JOEKELLEY at checkout. Get 10% off your entire order. How about that, people? Oh, man, before we get into anything, before we get into anything, my goodness, people, I know I like to come on here, have some fun, try to maybe crack some jokes, talk some shit, be inappropriate. I can't do that right now. It got a heavy heart, you know, a lot on my mind at this particular moment. I don't know if you guys know this, but uh, some breaking news for you. It's with a, with a very heavy heart that I, I have to be the one to break it, I guess, maybe. But the uh, the Queen of England has COVID, you know. So just keep her in your thoughts and prayers. Because that's somehow important and relevant, you know. That old bag of bones has COVID. Vaxxed, boosted, still got the goddamn virus, you know? I'm sure it has nothing to do with Europe on the verge of lifting their restrictions or anything like that, you know? I'm sure that's not going to be used to rile people up and to go, hey, wait a minute, maybe we did it too soon. But honestly, people, who gives a fuck about that old bitch? Does anybody care? Are we still playing kings and queens in the world? Are we still doing that, people? What does this lady fucking do? That's what I'm trying to figure out, is why the fuck is there still a queen of anything, you know? Weren't queens and kings notoriously kind of like mean, evil people? So why do we still let them exist? Of course, she's not cutting off anybody's head that we know of, you know? Maybe there's an island for chopping heads off of people that you don't care for. I wouldn't put it past them. But what's the fucking point? What does she do? 95 fucking years old and still playing dress up every goddamn day of her life. And for some reason, it's tolerated. I don't understand it. Listen, I don't wish death upon anybody, but I don't care if she gets better or not. I don't know if you guys feel the same way, but who gives a fuck about that lady? Who gives a fuck about the queen? Does she just own shit? Is that what they do now? They just own property? You know? Or is she involved in the politics of the world? I don't know. Do you know that the... (laughs) Do you know that the, the Queen of England is related to the Bushes in some way? They're like distant cousins, but they are related. You know? Did you know that, people? Did you know that there are seven bloodlines that continue to run the world? I don't know if you guys know this or not, but there are seven bloodlines. Can I name them all? No. Maybe I should have done some research. But one of them is the Queen of England and the Bush family dynasty. You know, they're somehow related. They're somehow both influential families on separate parts of the world, allegedly. So go figure that shit out. What does that mean? What does that have to do with anything? I don't know. I don't trust either of them. They're all reptilians from a different dimension 
here to wreak havoc on planet Earth. And by God, they're doing a pretty damn good job of it. You know? (laughs) I don't trust none of them. How do you feel about skull and bones, people? I didn't want to talk about any of this, but since we're on the topic, what do you know about skull and bones? What do you know about the Bushes being members of Skull and Bones? Do you know what it means to be a brother under the skin? Do you know what that means, people? This is what happens (laughs) at Yale University, where our brightest and best go, right? is they have a secret society called Skull and Bones. And when you're, a, when you're a member of the fraternity, it's pretty pretty much a frat house. What you do is you lay in a coffin, and then you jerk off, and you talk about all the sins you've committed in your life, but you've got to do it in front of your brothers. That way, if you ever turn your back on the brotherhood, they can uh, you know release the hounds on you, so to speak, because they know everything about you. So... To put it like this, people, remember in 2004 when Bush and Kerry were running against each other and they just happened to be cousins? Well, guess what? They also both happened to be Skull and Bones members who jerked off in front of each other in their teenage years. So, you guys figure it out. I hope the queen dies. I don't care. (laughs) I don't care at all. That's a joke, people. I'm very concerned about her and her health. Who gives a fuck? (laughs) COVID's done. If you're still getting COVID, that's, you know, that's on you now. We tried. We tried for a year, almost a year and a half, two years, you could say. We tried, all right? At this point, if you get COVID, you're on your fucking own, all right? We need to go back to going to shopping malls and stuff like that. (laughs) That's what we need. Oh, how was your weekend, people? Hey, did you have some fun? What did you get into? Oh, fucking Monday's a holiday, isn't it? Isn't it President's Day or some shit tomorrow? Hey, before I forget, happy Black History Month, my friends. I know this podcast is mostly listened to by my African-American friends, you know. That's, from the stats I'm getting, 98% of my audience is black. So I'm I'm sorry it's taken me almost three weeks to get around to it. (laughs) But happy Black History Month. I saw the best fucking thing. UFC put out like a on YouTube, they put out an ultimate knockouts, but to celebrate Black History Month. So it's a compilation of knockout videos, but they're celebrating Black History Month. So it's just, you know what it is. It's just black guys knocking fucking white guys out, just beating the shit out of them. Pretty great stuff. <laughs> Yeah, what a what a way to celebrate, you know. You that's I thought it was the most brilliant fucking thing ever. <laughs> it's like, huh? Ultimate knockouts. They've had many editions of those, you know. But then, like the subtext was like, uh, also, we're this is celebrating Black History Month, and it's like, huh? I wonder what this is gonna be. Is it gonna be black fellas mauling white guys? You betcha. What a great compilation, and what a way to celebrate. I loved it. <laughs> That's my big way. That's my big way to rain in the holiday. <laughs> in fucking uh, I went to Tuscaloosa, Alabama, people. That's what I did with my weekend, or that's where I was on Friday. And uh, man, I tell you, Tuscaloosa, what a little diamond in the rough they got going down there. Tuscaloosa is a pretty nice city, nice folks there. Everyone seemed to be getting along. Not what you think of when you think of Alabama. You know, but in order to get to Tuscaloosa, you do have to go through Alabama. So the sights along the way are just great. The billboards are the best. It's all Jesus, guns, and Trump. You know, everybody has at least 14 or 15 flags. Seven of them are American flags. About four of them are don't tread on me. And then they still got the the Trump 2020 flag. Some people are still holding on to that. You know, there was the, the old Confederate flag down there. But hey, listen. <laughs> people that's about heritage so i can't judge i can't judge nobody someone's granddaddy fought for that flag you know <laughs> when are we going to stop being so caught up in flags anyway you know isn't this aren't we over this flag shit yet why do you need a flag all the goddamn time to show who you uh stand with i guess isn't that what it's doing 
get all, it's so Carlin, George Carlin had a great joke where he says, I consider flags to be symbols and I leave symbols to the symbol minded. So it's like, what does it mean? It just causes a big ruckus, you know? I don't know why people need so many flags too. Everybody needs their own flag. It seems like any time a group of people get together, all of a sudden they start waving a flag. And that's when I check out. I'm not big into flag waving. You know what I mean? I got a few symbols I keep around. The all-seeing eye, that's a symbol that I find most places in my world, you know, that's a symbol I can stick with. But other than that, I have a symbol that I created. I read this book about the occult one time and how you make an occult symbol is you take a word and you attach an idea or a thought to that word. And uh, to make it a symbol, you just take out the vowels of the word. And then you can rearrange the consonants in any way you want to, to make it some kind of symbol or picture or something like that. So, I've... (laughs) Make your own symbol, people. I'm sure I look like a lunatic. I put that thing on every single set list, and it kind of looks like a person, you know? So I'm sure I look like a fucking lunatic. But it means something to me. What does it mean to me? It means the idea is to do well at comedy. So I made a little symbol, so now anytime I see it, I put it on every set list. It's like, hey, remember, just try and do well, you know? So... A little reminder. But Tuscaloosa was great. That's what I was talking about. The show was great. The show was fantastic. It's always fun because it's like it was no Panama City. I'll tell you that, people. I don't know if you listened to last week's podcast, but go check it out because what a shit show that was in fucking Panama City. But you got to go through those kind of those shows and then you do a good one. Or it is decent. It was a good show. There were people there. Everybody was minding their P's and Q's for the most part. So that was great. I feel like I got paid like the highest form of compliment by a fella. He almost seemed like a quasi homeless dude, but he was a regular at the brewery we were at black warrior brewing. Check it out. If you're ever in Tuscaloosa, fantastic place, man. Jason, the owner, he was there. What a guy. Very kind, very fucking kind. As soon as I walked in fucking fantastic, but this old guy named Keith, right? He was like, he's, you could just tell any, if you go to a comedy show that you've never like been to the city, You can, I feel like I've gotten to the point, if you do it enough, you can look at a crowd and go, that guy's probably there every fucking time, probably in the same spot, you know what I mean? And as soon as I saw him, I was like, that that dude's probably here, like every fucking week. And sure enough, like all the local comics knew him, so that's how I figured out his name was Keith, had a cowboy hat, looked kind of homeless, but uh, but after the show, he goes, hey, man, you were funny. You're doing something real different. And I go, fuck, okay, cool, fuck yeah. He's like, yeah, that was very different and unique. And I'm like, I feel like that means a lot coming from you because you are a regular at local comedy shows. So you've seen a lot of people and a lot of shit. So, again, in comparison to Panama people, where I was fighting with the crowd the whole time, and then watching this dude make out with two sisters, one of whom he is marrying in two days. Apparently, he's married to now. Shout out to that dude if you're listening to the podcast, fella. Hey, congratulations on marrying that lady. <laughs> I personally would have went with her sister. But, you know, but Tuscaloosa, t- <laughs> I almost did it without fucking up. Absolutely fantastic. Good show. Good times all around. I'm trying to think if anything bad happened. It's just a college town. The worst thing that happened was... There was a group of uh, college girls walking by and they stopped near me and started talking loud. So if that's the, <laughs> that is the only thing, just uh, shrill voices for about 30 seconds. But I was like, you know what? I can get out of this situation and go inside. I feel like I've matured a lot, you know? Because usually what I'd do is I'd probably yell at those women to shut the fuck up, you know, because I'm one of those types of people. And if they try to get up at it, I, you know, I don't mind throwing fists. I'm not against it. I love fighting, especially in the streets and especially against women. That's pr- <laughs> I love it. But, you know, I've matured. I've gotten rid of that part of me. So I was like, you know what? I'll just go inside. <laughs> 
And that was honestly the worst thing of the whole fucking thing. Went and got some barbecue there, some Tuscaloosa barbecue. It was good. It was fine. It wasn't any, you know, it wasn't special or anything. But the, I will say this. I got a, a sandwich. I got a, like a smoked chicken sandwich, right? Comes with two sides, as any good southern sandwich place does, you know? Got to get the greens. Big fan of greens. I had some collard greens. It's like, I'll get those. You know what? They didn't have the Tabasco vinegar or the hot pepper vinegar, whatever it is. So felt a little cheated there. And then I got the cornbread. Because I was like, I got to try corn. I love cornbread, you know? If a place has cornbread, I got to try it. Great cornbread. But I realized ordering it that the the young lady working behind the counter, when I said, and cornbread, she was like, and cornbread? And I was like, yeah, I want to try the cornbread. I think it was because I got a sandwich and cornbread. Maybe most people don't do that. But I don't think I was thinking entirely clearly. I just saw cornbread and I was like, hey, I got to get some cornbread. But now I'm looking like I'm fucking bulking up, you know, because I'm getting a sandwich and some extra bread. But that's what the greens were for, you know, the pork buttery soaked fucking greens to even everything out (laughs) and the Diet Coke. Uh, (laughs) Great spot. Go check it out. It's called Moe's. Moe's something barbecue. They also, man, if I would have had a place to stay, Boy, I think I would have had some fun. But it was only three and a half hours. I was like, I'll just take it easy and drive back. Which ended up being, man, I was fucked up all day Saturday just because I was so tired driving home. And by the time I got home, it was like, the brain was, it was probably like 4 a.m. So my brain was just kind of fried and I didn't sleep well, but it fucked me up. But anyway, they had fucking $5 doubles. Bro. At the barbecue place or whatever, it was like, man, I would have, I would have thrown down on some of those in a college town of all places. Why? What are the, what are you doing? You know what I mean? You should have five dollar doubles for adults. That should be something an adult can get at most, like adult bars, you know, places that aren't in the fucking right on campus. You know what I mean? Is that like normal? It is normal. I was in fucking Tallahassee in Florida. It's a Sunday after a show. And everyone on the show is like, hey, we're going to go to this bar. It's a little college bar. They bring in free pizza on the hour, every hour, from the place next door. And also, they have pictures of Yingling for like two bucks. And it's like, I get that college kids don't have money, but... I feel like their parents are probably paying for those drinks anyway. But having the access to cheap drinks like that, it seems like, listen, I'm not trying to be out of line here, but in that environment, I can see how rapes and stuff happen. (laughs) You know what I mean? You're fueling these children with like cheap fucking drinks and they have no self-control. Of course not. It's the first time being out away from their parents. Well, I guess you got to be 21, right, to drink. You telling me everybody going in there and getting $5 doubles is 21? I don't think so. But it seems like just a terrible idea in general. But I guess what's the difference between going and getting a $5 double and spending 15 bucks on a fifth and just taking it back to your dorm? I don't know. I don't know, people. But it's like, God damn, you make it easy for these kids to get fucking boot scooting zooted out here. You know what I mean? And I believe, I believe people were walking around with plastic cups and they could drink from them too. Why? That's a thing in college towns. You can just let people drink on the streets. And then these kids go vote. And then they're going to be in charge of something one day. They're going to teach your kids. You know what I mean? They're going to work, they're going to, they're going to be your boss. (laughs) Anyway, (laughs) I got no idea. I got no idea, people. Did you see the greatest halftime show ever? I know this is a week late, but whatever. I didn't watch the fucking, 
it was I did the podcast last week before the goddamn hit football game. Anyway, people, did you watch the greatest halftime show ever? Boy, oh boy, was that underwhelming, huh? And listen, I'm a fan of everybody who was on there. Who'd they have? We had Eminem, we had Dr. Dre, we had Snoop Dogg, Mary J. Blige, 50 Cent, and was there anybody else that I missed? I don't know. But let's be honest. Far from the greatest, far, far from the greatest fucking halftime show ever. I think they have to keep saying that because we all know deep down that the greatest halftime show ever was Janet Jackson's titty. So every year they're like, this is going to be the best halftime show ever. And it's like, no, 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 no. You'll never top a titty. And now you go in the complete opposite direction of titty time. You know, I know what they're doing. I'm not impressed by it. And again, I love all those fellas. It's like, (laughs) you already knew it wasn't going to be the best Super Bowl halftime performance ever just because they're not allowed to have good performances anymore because of the titty. Imagine that. Imagine a titty just changes how society is in a way. One single titty. Meanwhile, porn has gotten just completely out of control and more easily accessible (laughs) and much, much worse things, you know, every fucking, every app, Instagram, Twitter, all of it is just nothing but titties. But for some reason, the halftime Super Bowl had to change. And now we get fucking old men performing songs that used to be cool. And it wasn't great. It can't be great. It's impossible for that shit to be great. You know, unless you get, you know, get Ted Nugent out there, have him shred shred the national anthem a little bit. That's probably. (laughs) And you'd think most football fans, most people who really enjoy football would probably enjoy a fucking Ted Nugent concert. Maybe not most of them. (laughs) I don't know. (laughs) Now that I think about it, anybody I know who watches football probably would not enjoy a Ted Nugent (laughs) fucking (laughs) halftime performance. (laughs) But I just think they're not real football fans, you know. They like the teams more than the game. They're not real. (laughs) They don't like the game. They don't like the science behind what football is, you know. They just have their team they root for. (laughs) Oh, shit. Shit. Uh, yeah, uh, let's get you the, where are we at here? Uh, we're doing fine. There's a couple, we could talk about some more stuff. There's, listen, I don't watch a lot of TV, as you people know. Even though I'm talking about the halftime fucking show, watching some TV. I spend a lot of time like YouTube, as most men nowadays, I feel. Uh, there's a great channel that I've been watching. Y'all should check it out. It's, if you're into like true crime and all that shit, it's fantastic. It's called Explore With Us. So they'll take a lot of like interrogation videos and kind of like do examinations of what particular questions are being asked, like how they're responding to those questions, the body language. It's really fascinating shit. I've been loving it. I watched one that, oh man, listen, if you're going to, you know, if you're going to turn to that side and start murdering people, make sure you're good at it. You know what I mean? (laughs) these two fucking kids they're like high school kids right and they're fucking nerds that's what they are you know they're fucking nerds and they decide i think the the idea behind why they did what they did is because they loved the scream movies so this particular episode is called the scream killers you know, they were obsessed with horror movies. So they had an idea to make their own, but in making their own, they were going to like kill people. Actually, they killed their fucking friend too. Like they killed somebody that they knew some fucking high school girl. You know what I mean? These fucking idiots, these fucking yahoos. And the real fucked up thing is, is they literally documented everything but the murder. You know what I'm saying? So they have, everything is on video them talking about how they're going to kill her, how they're going to do it, when they're going to do it. You know what I mean? They have 
them talking about killing her leading up to the killing. Dude, it's real fucked up too, man. It's like the day of the killing, one of the dudes meets her at her locker and is like talking to her and shit, you know? Real fucked up. These two fucking idiots. But uh, they're in jail, by the way. <laughs> they're in fucking jail. <laughs> it's so, man, it's just irritating to fucking, just people are so fucking stupid, man, you know. But anyway, it's the interrogation is fucking fascinating. Their alibi for the time that she was killed, they're like, we were at a movie. And uh, all the interrogation officer does is go, well, tell me about the movie. And it's like, immediately, it's just over. You know what I mean? It's just done. Because they didn't know shit about the movie at all. And one of the kids, he's like, well, I just wasn't paying attention. And he's like, you watched the whole movie and you can't name any anything that happened. He's like, well, you know, we left and then it just slow. It's so funny because it's like they're talking in their videos. They're talking about how great they are and how cool they are. And like, yeah, we're going to we're just fucking killers and we're so smart and fuck everybody. And then they go, uh, well, where were you watching a movie? Well, tell me about the movie. Just, uh, you know, they just fucking crack. So but anyway, a great channel. If you like that kind of shit, it's fascinating. It's good. I'll be honest with you. A lot of them don't end well. You know, a lot of them are just interrogations kind of based off a murder of somebody. There's one cool one where the dude is completely innocent and he's being interrogated and they're like accusing him of doing it. And uh, the breakdown of the body language and everything is pretty fantastic on that one. He didn't go to jail. He didn't get fucked over either. He was innocent. They found the other dude who killed her, and it's like, hey, fucking hey, explore with us. Go check it out. Maybe we can talk about more of that in the future. Hey, let's get you the animal video clip of the week and get you on your way. We're ending on a dark note. Because <laughs> here's the thing, people. I've had a an absolute, almost irrational fear of sharks ever since I've been a kid. I've always thought it was not irrational. But around other people, it seems irrational. I'm absolutely terrified of fucking sharks. If one pops up somewhere where I'm not expecting it, I freak out. I get very scared. I'll turn my head away. You know, I'll bury my face in a couch. I don't know why, but I have been that way since I was a kid. Even though I caught a shark. I caught a, like a four foot shark when I was a kid. We went deep sea fishing. Caught one. I just can't. They fucking... They're monsters, but everyone's like, no, they're fine. They're just misunderstood. They're just misunderstood. They don't hurt nobody. It's like, yeah, they do. <laughs> You're not, they're just waiting to hurt somebody, you know? But, uh, so basically there's a video. This just happened, I think yesterday or today, but it's in Sydney, Australia. The first time a fatal shark attack has happened since like 1963 or some shit. The video does not catch the actual attack on video, but it's the complete aftermath of it. And it's not like, you know, sometimes you see videos, there's that surfer girl, she got her arm bitten off by a shark that's on, that's uh, caught on camera, you know, that was like a while ago. It just like shredded her arm off, you know, but she's still out there surfing, doing her thing. This shark fucking, he treated this, this person was in a wetsuit, allegedly. This is how the story went. Dude swimming in a wetsuit. And that shark, if you've ever seen Shark Week, how they attack seals, like, coming from, like, straight up the water, that's how this fucking shark launched at that dude and shredded that dude up, ate the motherfucker. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> everyone tells you not to worry about sharks and not be afraid of the ocean. I'm telling you, people, be afraid. Be very... <laughs> Be very afraid of the ocean. Be very afraid of sharks. They're not misunderstood. They're fucking killing machines. Should we be out in boats and eliminating them from the water? Yeah, we should. Get rid of all of them. They're probably going to fuck up the ecosystem if we do that, you know? If we kill every shark, I'm sure it will have repercussions we don't necessarily want to deal with. But let's be honest. They're scary. I don't know why everyone it gets so fucking hyped up for Shark Week every year. I don't know why that's a thing. It's fucking terrifying. It's a month of terrifying commercials, terrifying ads on YouTube. I fucking hate that shit. 
they used to, I worked in DC. That's where the fucking Discovery Building, the Discovery Channel building is, right? Every, for the month, whatever, I think it's July or some shit like that. They'd take a big shark head and a shark fin and stick it, or a tail, and like put it on the building so it looked like a shark was coming out of the building. Listen, that didn't scare me, okay? But it's still, <laughs> it's just, I don't understand why people were so obsessed with these things. And how much more, once you've seen one shark week, how many more shark weeks do you fucking need, people? Are we really learning that much more about them every single year? No. They're eating seals. They love killing babies. They love eating people. Baby seals is what I meant, not humans. They probably eat your baby. Let me ask you this. Would you trust your baby around a shark? I rest my case. We don't need to see a week of anything that you wouldn't trust your baby around. All right? So keep that in mind. And here's the other thing. I'm not trying to come out here and cancel Shark Week. You know what I mean? Live and let live, people. I'm not going to take it away from you because it terrifies me, you know, because it hurts my feelings. I'm not going to try and ruin it for everybody because it upsets me, even though I should. What if I wrote a letter to Discovery and I was like, hey, Shark Week triggers me and I got it taken down for everybody. It triggers me and I'm gay. (laughs) Then they'd have to take it down, you know, because if they don't, then it's hateful, something like that. (laughs) But I've just, I've about had enough of this shark shit in, you know, first attack since, or the first fatal attack since 1963 in Sydney, Australia. I'm not keeping up with all the shark attacks, but terrifying. They should be eliminated from planet Earth, in my opinion. I don't know how you feel. Let me know. Are you a shark person or are you not a shark person? I don't care for them. What scares you? What strikes fear in your heart? Is it something that, is likely to ever cause harm to you ever, like it is for me, you know? My greatest fear is probably sharks. I'm not even kidding. Nothing else really gets to me like that, but a fucking shark? God damn. I can't deal with it. I can't deal with it. A lot of people are afraid to die alone or something like that, but not me. I welcome that. We're all going to die alone anyway, people. It's all an illusion. But sharks, I could do without. I could do without. Hey, thanks for checking out the podcast, everybody. Hope we had some fun this week. Don't forget, this podcast is sponsored by Top Shelf Grind Coffee. Go over to Amazon.com, get yourself some Top Shelf Grind Coffee. Use the promo code 10-J-O-E-K-E-L-L-E-Y on checkout. Get you 10% off your entire order. All right? Hey, once again, thanks for checking out the podcast. Go to JoeKellyComedy.com for whatever's coming up. I'm uh, shooting a movie, shooting a movie this next month. So I'm going to be doing, uh, I don't know. I'm going to be doing that over the next month. So I don't have a lot going on as far as shows, but we'll be doing podcasts. We'll be making videos. The stink hole hour is coming, people. Me and my buddy, Monty Mitchell, we're starting a podcast. That's going to be coming out next week. So be on the lookout for that. And uh, I'll try and keep it interesting. All right. Hey, take care of yourself. Take care of somebody else. All right. I'll catch you around very soon. Later.